Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And in today's video, we are going to be trying to turn this pile of busted and broken real Ghostbusters action figures into something that is pretty displayable because I have plans in future to fix up this Ecto-1 that I've had in my collection for a long time. The Ecto-1 itself has been really smashed about and broken and I've been slowly rebuilding it from pieces and parts with the idea that at some point I'm going to customise it, put lights in it and do some other sort of different things with it. But while I'm thinking about that, project I thought it would be quite fun to try and sort out this which is my bag of broken original uh, Kenner figures. Now all of these have uh, seen better days some of them are just bare limbs as you can see here other ones have uh, whole bits missing and I think there's enough here that I can actually make one full set of uh, real Ghostbusters figures. I don't think I've got quite enough uh, proton packs but at least I can get the figures ready and waiting for when I get round to fixing up the XO1. So that's going to be the project today we're going to turn this pile of broken figures into some nice displayable figures figures. So the first thing to do is work out what we've actually got here and what needs repairing. We'll start with the proton packs. You can see I have uh, two proton packs that are both uh, pretty damaged but I've shown how to repair these before in a previous video and I think most of the issues I have covered already. So we've got here a broken handle which we can repair with some styrene. This one is also missing the little clip that goes into the back of it but I think I saw if we look at uh, Winston here the clip is actually still in the back of this figure. So if we can remove that, we can easily stick that one back on and repair that. The other proton pack has uh, the beam snapped off. And again, I've shown a fix for that one. It's also missing the handle at this end, so we can repair that. Again, another fix I've shown. And this one is missing all of the uh, handles on the bottom. So that's gonna be quite a lot of uh, work to repair that. But again, it's just a uh, plastic weld and styrene sheet. So easy enough to do. So that is definitely something that can be fixed. Let's look at the figure. So I've only got one Winston figure, which is this one. He's pretty dirty. You can see there's sort of dirt marks all up his uh, trousers there. But I reckon a good clean and he won't look too bad at all. Then there's a few little uh, marks on the paint that need touching up, mainly on his feet and a little bit on his hands. So that will be the uh, Winston figure. Let's look at Ray. I've got a few different Rays, all in a fairly sorry state. Uh, this poor chap is missing an arm. He's uh, certainly seen better days. So. And this is a good part on that one. I think we'll put him to one side. This one is pretty yellowed and damaged, so we'll leave that one as well. Out of these two, what have we got? Well, that rate isn't looking too bad at all. He has a few paint scuffs, but otherwise he's in pretty reasonable condition. I can see the piece of plastic inside him has sort of moved out of the way, but Otherwise, I think we will use that ray. So he will just need a few paint repairs, again, mainly on his boots and a bit on his hair. So that's the ray. Then we come on to Egon, and I've got, um, well, yeah, two and a bit of these Egons, because I've got lots of uh, body parts and some other busted up figures. Of these two Egons, I think this one is the better one of the two. This one has some sort of damage, it looks like, on his hand, and there's a lot of paint wear. This one is not too bad, but he does suffer with some mould on his leg. You can see there's some mould spots on his leg and that tends to suggest that this was made in a factory in Malaysia. You often see mould spots on uh, figures from Malaysia. It doesn't actually say on the back of these, so uh, hard to prove, but that is my reckoning. So what we're gonna do on this one is I have these other limbs which are in really nice condition. I've never tried to boil and pop on these figures, so heating the figure up in just boiled water normally softens the plastic enough that you can pop out uh, the limbs on them. It certainly works on Star Wars figures. I've never tried it on one of these, so we will be trying that to see if we can swap some of these limbs over and put the better limbs that I have onto this figure, because actually all of the limbs here are in really nice condition. There's no marks on them at all, so I think we can swap those out. The only one that we can't is the head, even though the head is in better condition because actually the bottom of that has snapped off. But certainly that will be fun to try and uh, boil and pot that. I've never done it before and it's always interesting to try something new on a figure. And then we come on to Peter and it looks like I have three different Peters. This one has certainly been very well played with. He is incredibly floppy so I think I'll put that one to one side. And then of these two I think this one is probably the better one. He needs some uh, paint repairs. You can see he's got lots of scuff marks on his head there. Certainly his hands have uh, had a lot of paint wear on them, but otherwise he is in pretty reasonable condition. Oh, I say that till we look at the back of him. The back of him is a little bit damaged there. So maybe if the boil and pop works on Egon, we can do the same on these two and uh, swap some limbs around because I can see there's some damage to the head on this one. Looks like the neck has been melted a bit. So yeah, if the boil and pop works, we will boil and pop some limbs on that. So that is the start of the project. We've got a fair bit to do. 
so let's just get on with it. The first thing I really want to do with these figures is actually just give them a good clean because none of them have ever been washed. They've just turned up here and I put them in a bag waiting for future restoration. But even before I do that, I want to see if I can actually remove this post from the back of Winston because that is something we need to keep and save. So it feels loose, but I know that these backpacks actually sort of clip in. So I'm hoping maybe just a pair of pliers, I can actually grab that. So I've got a pair of pliers here. There's just a little piece that it looks like I've got enough to grab onto. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that did actually pull out pretty reasonably. And if we look at the uh, backpack that I think it's broken off of, I'm hoping that will be a perfect match, which it is, which is great, which makes it much easier to fix. So uh, we will be fixing that later. But now that's out, let's go and give these a good clean. I'm just going to be washing them in hot soapy water, using a toothbrush to get into the sort of nooks and crannies. And on some of them, I will also use a magic eraser because you can see there's this sort of dirt on the trousers that will come off uh, using a magic eraser. So um, yeah, let's get this all cleaned up and then we can start rebuilding. As you can see, everything is now uh, cleaned up pretty nicely. And I'm very happy with how, how Winston turned out. All of the dirt on him has come off, so he just has a few little paint rubs left to uh, sort out. The two Peters, the one that had something in the back, which I thought was glue, I think that's actually a bit of paper that's been sort of rolled up and then maybe coloured with a biro, because I've managed to get most of that out with a pair of tweezers. So I've ended up with two pretty reasonable Peters. Ray, again, doesn't look too bad at all. We just got to do a few bits of paint touches on him. And then we've got Egon, which is the one I'm most interested in because we've got to do the a boil and pop on his leg. And I knew that I had another one out in my garage somewhere and I've just been out and found it. And this other one, as you can see, has also smashed to pieces. And what's happened here is the plastic on his body has gone incredibly uh, fragile. So just moving his arms and moving his head means that things break off. But this is a, another good source for parts if I need it. So let's go and boil the kettle and see what we can do with uh, boiling and popping. So we are now ready to uh, do the boil and pop. And this is the figure that I want to uh, work on. I want to swap the leg on this, the head and possibly this left arm. But as I've never worked on these kind of figures before, I'm going to do some tests. And I have a couple of sacrificial uh, figures here which are in a very sorry state. And we will be testing whether this boil and pop method works at all on these larger figures. Now, I know it works very well on Star Wars figures. It also works very well on Action Force figures, but they're a little bit smaller. So um, I'm just unsure as to whether it will heat the plastic up enough to make it soft that we can then pull them out of the sockets. As you can see on this figure, the plastic has gone very brittle. So it may be that this one actually sort of cracks apart. That's why I want to do some tests. So I've got a mug here. I'm going to fill this up with some just boiled water. I'll put these figures in, let them warm up for 30 seconds to a minute and then we'll see what happens. See if I can actually pull these limbs out and see if anything breaks. If it all goes smoothly then I will start to work on this one and I'll remove the limbs one at a time and then slot the new ones in. And again to slot the limbs in I will basically take the good limb that I've got here, put it into the boiled water until the plastic gets nice and soft and then push it into the uh, hole using something like a screwdriver just to carefully push it in. It's a fairly brutal looking process but it can be done. And I've uh, as I say done it many times on slightly smaller figures. So let's just see what happens. Okay, so that is great news. It is possible. The uh, legs are a little bit harder to get out of the sockets than the arms just because the uh, posts are a bit thicker, but they do all come out. So now that we've done some tests, we can get to work 
on Egon. I'm just going to uh, reboil some water so that it is as hot as it possibly can be and we'll start trying to swap out these legs. I've already put one of his legs in just to do a bit of a test. In fact it's gone right to the bottom. So let me just grab that. So there we go, that is one of his legs and as you can see it has gone really soft. So yeah I'm very hopeful that this is going to be an easy process. So yeah let's do some freshly boiled water and we'll start again. That ended up being a lot easier than I thought it would be. So what I've done is actually swapped a, a few more limbs. I swapped his head so that we've got a nicer head. I swapped the mouldy leg and then I ended up swapping both of the arms. So the only original pieces on this figure now are the chest and this right leg. Otherwise everything else we have boiled and popped. And as you can see we've now got a really nice looking figure. So that's uh, Egon all sorted. We can move on to uh, the next part of this project. With the proton packs we are going to start with the simplest issue which is fixing the clip on the back of this one which has snapped off and to uh, fix that we're just going to uh, drill a hole into the backpack we're going to drill a hole into the broken clip and we will insert some of this which is a bit of a lego whip antenna now these lego whip antennas are two millimeters in diameter so i have put a two millimeter diameter drill bit in my little drill here and i'm going to very carefully drill a couple of holes once i've got those all in and lined up i'm going to insert the piece of lego into here we'll cut it to length and we will glue it in place just with a very small amount of super glue we can then add a very small amount of super glue to this part as well and then we'll push that onto the piece of lego and it will glue in place and that should form a really nice strong bond and then this backpack should be uh, working again so well, let's get all those holes drilled and we'll get this bit of lego glued in place <laughs> Now that peg has been reattached we can get on with the uh, fun part which is rebuilding all of these little clips and handles and I have a whole video where I went through the process that I used to uh, do this and it's basically going to be reconstructing it out of uh, 
bits of styrene sheet. So I've got various bits of offcuts of styrene sheet. Whenever I do a project these days and I've got bits of styrene left, I just put it in a bag because they're always useful. So this is all sorts of bits of styrene, all different thicknesses. And I think for this, I'm going to need some two millimeter, some one millimeter, and maybe a bit of half millimeter. And I'm just going to uh, reshape these pieces out of this styrene. You can cut and shape it incredibly easy. All you need is a knife and a pair of plastic nippers and then some files just to sort of sand things down. And we should be able to make some uh, recreation parts. And then we will be plastic welding them in place. Uh, this one is going to be fairly straightforward because it's just a small bit missing. This one is going to take a little bit longer because I've basically got to rebuild the clips from scratch. So that might take a little bit of time, but it's a fairly straightforward process if you're used to working with a styrene sheet and plastic weld. Do check out my previous video because I go into uh, much more detail about how I do this, but it shouldn't be uh, too hard to do. So uh, let's get to recreating all of these missing parts. After a fair amount of uh, scratch building and repairs, I've now got two packs that I'm pretty happy with. Uh, the first one was the one with the uh, broken peg, so that is now glued on nicely. And as you can see, I've just done a very minor repair on the little handle here, but that now fits quite neatly into uh, the figure's hand. So if I put uh, it on uh, Winston here, you can see he can hold that. And the other feature on this is that it should clip onto the backpack. There are the uh, two little clips on the side there. I think if we clip that on, Yep, that does clip on. So all we've got to do on that one now is give it a coat of paint. Um, so uh, we'll do that in a second. This other backpack was a lot more work. Both of the handles were missing. So I had to uh, rebuild those completely from scratch, just using different thicknesses of styrene sheet. And I've actually made these a little bit thicker than the originals because the originals do have a tendency to break. So I thought I'm just making them a about half a millimetre thicker, they should just be that little bit stronger. So you can now see that this will actually fit again in Winston's hand, so uh, he can hold that. That's it, it all working. We were also missing the end part here of the uh, beam. So uh, this little part here had completely snapped off and was missing. And I've made this, this is just out of some two millimetre diameter styrene rod. And I've added a little bit of detail with uh, some four millimetre styrene rod, which I've drilled a hole in. And then in one end, I've inserted a tiny piece of paper clip. So I've drilled a very small hole using my pin vise and then inserted a piece of paper clip. And on the end of this, I've also drilled a very tiny hole and this will now sit in there. It still needs to be glued in place, but I'm gonna do that once everything's painted. But you can see that looks pretty reasonable. And then again, the actual beam was snapped off. So what I've done there is drilled a very tiny hole in the end and put another piece of paper clip in that. I've also done the same there, another tiny hole. 
and that will fit in there. These all need to be glued because at the moment they are a little bit on the loose side, but you can see that is now the beam together. And if I turn that, it does move a bit, but this one is actually sort of a bit freewheeling at the end there. So once that's glued in place, this will then work fully. And what I forgot to show you is that these clips also now fit onto the proton pack as well, which is the other part that I showed you on the first one. So this should sit on the back there. If I just clip this in place, I think I have to do the top one first. So that also clips onto the backpack. So all we've got to do now is get everything painted and those packs will look really good on the figure. So let's get to the painting part of this project. There is a lot to get painted on this project. So I'm gonna start with the simplest bits, which are the uh, backpacks. And for that, I'm just gonna be using some Vallejo model color. This is 70.925 blue. I think I might have to add a little bit of white to that because the uh, wands have actually sort of faded a little bit, but I'll try the blue just neat. And then I've got to find a match for the yellow of the proton beam there. And I've got, to, again, this is a flat, yellow this is a 70.953 which I think I'll add a little bit of white to and a little bit of green to it's not sort of that important that this matches because it's sort of hidden away at one end but I'll try and get it as close as I can this uh, yellow is a particularly sort of neon yellow and I don't actually have anything that matches that but I'll get it as close as I can let's start with the blue first and once that's all applied and dried these are uh, matte color paint so I have a satin varnish which I will put over the top of everything and that will give it the same sort of sheen as the original plastic and that goes the same for all of the painting that I'm doing. When I paint the figures, I will finish everything off with a satin varnish. So let's do the blue first. For the uh, flesh colour on Winston, we just need to paint a few little spots on his hands there. His head is actually moulded in the uh, brown plastic. There are a few paint rubs on his hair and that is just a flat black. So for the brown colour, I have used this game colour, which is called Beastly Brown 72.043. To that, I have added a very small amount of black and even tinier amount of white. And then it doesn't quite match. It's actually a little bit redder. So I've added a very small amount of red and I've only got this uh, game colour bloody red. but it really is just a dot of red that I've added. And I've managed to mix up a brown, which is a pretty close match. You can see there's just on his knuckles, there's just a little bit of wear. So that I'm very happy with as a color match. So while I'm painting this, as I've already got a neat black there, I will touch up the hair on his head as well, just with a little bit of black. It's just got a few sort of rubs around it. And as I said previously, once all of this is dry, I will put a, a satin finish over the top of it. So. Uh, these are just some very minor repairs on poor little Winston here. We do have to repair his shoes, but I think the shoe color is the same across all the figures. So I'll do that all in one go. Now we come to uh, Peter's hands and the flesh color on this is actually very yellow. It does have some flesh tones to it, but it's yeah a lot more yellow than I was expecting. So what I've done is I've taken some of this, which is an aqua color Revel, uh, and this is called Flesh. This is number 35. I don't have a Vallejo flesh color, but they're all pretty much the same. To that, I have added some white. I've also added a tiny amount of uh, the uh, yellow. So this is uh, 70.953 flat yellow. I've managed to mix up a color, which is a pretty close match to the sort of strange flesh tones that we have here. You can see if I paint that on, that's not a bad match at all. It might need a couple of coats on this one just because the plastic underneath is so dark. But I'm pretty happy with the uh, color of that. And while I'm uh, painting the uh, flesh on this one, I'm also gonna touch up his hair because I've still got that beastly brown here and I'm just gonna add some white and a bit of black to that. And I think I'll be able to get the uh, same sort of color here. So um, let's get these bits painted up and then um, yeah, we can uh, work on the next figure. But the flesh colors are just a bit strange. I don't think uh, Ray's flesh color is the same. That one's a bit more orange. And then what about Egon? Well, Egon's is fairly similar. It might just be that this paint has faded in the sort of sun over the years, but um, I'll have to do one, each one individually.
for raise hands, I did just modify the uh, mix that I'd made up for Peter, just adding a little bit more sort of yellow. Uh, it seemed to uh, work quite well, so that, that is now matched. Now I'm working on Egon's hair, and Egon's hair is a very strange colour. It's a sort of slightly minty yellow. So what I've done is I've taken some of this uh, flat yellow, which is 70.953, added some uh, white to that, and then a very tiny amount of blue, which is this Andrea blue, 70.841. And I've got a sort of minty uh, yellowy green, which is a pretty close match. You can see if I just paint this on the uh, little chips, that's not looking too bad. So I'm going to do all the touch ups on that and then we'll work on Ray's hair. Ray's hair is another strange colour. It's a sort of orangey brown. He's also missing his eyebrows, but you can see I've just started uh, practicing putting one of the eyebrows back on. The colour I've mixed up again uses Beastly Brown as the base. I've added a bit of uh, Orange Fire, which is another game colour, which is 72.008, and then a tiny amount of white. And I think I've got a sort of orangey brown that matches. For painting things like the eyebrows, I do have quite a fine brush here. And uh, because the eyebrows are raised, they're actually sort of uh, raised in the sculpt, they should be easy to paint with a brush, but uh, if not, then uh, you can use a pin tool, which is something that I've shown how to make on this channel, and also how to use it to uh, paint tiny things like eyes and uh, eyebrows on uh, Star Wars figures. So it may be that I use that, but I think I should be able to do this all with this uh, brush today. And uh, let's get all of the uh, hair touched up on this one. He's got quite a lot of damage, so I might end up uh, repainting everything. But to uh, start with, I'll just do this, the uh, little patches, and uh, yeah, I think it'll end up looking pretty nice. Each of the figures have this grey band around their right arms and I've uh, mixed up a paint which is a pretty close match but they're all going to need a slight sort of variation because each one is slightly different shade of grey. So all I've done is I've mixed up some black and some white to make a grey and I've added a very tiny amount of this Andrea Blue 70.841 and that's given me a colour which is a pretty close match but I think uh, Ray's one is a little bit lighter and I think Egon's is a little bit lighter so I'll add some more white to that as I go through and sort of paint each one but yeah each one is going to be a slightly different mix of those colours, black, white and the Andrea blue. final stage is to do the boots and sort of other fine details which are all the same sort of bluey grey but actually the base for this I have used this game colour which is called dark green so this is 72.028 to that I have added some black and some white and I've ended up with this uh, very sort of uh, dark grey green and to that I have added a very tiny amount of Andrea blue and I think I've got a grey that matches it's a really sort of odd colour but um, yeah I'm thinking this is pretty close you can see here if I paint onto uh, Peter's shoes that's a pretty reasonable match. I have a feeling that they're all going to need slightly sort of subtle mixes of this, a bit of a variation on each one, because each figure has had a slightly different life and, you know, has been stored in different conditions. So I think the paint's going to be subtly different on each one, but this is a good base to start. So I'll go around and touch up all of the little issues on uh, Peter and just touch up the bits on his feet. And once that's all done, I will go around and give everything the uh, satin varnish. And that's all the painting done on these figures. It's been an awful lot of work.
And here we go, here are the four finished figures ready to go back on display. So I've taken what was essentially a bag of broken and busted figures and turned them into something really nice and displayable. And the bulk of the work on this has been the painting process, just because there are so many different colours that need to be mixed and matched, and that does take time. The rest of it really is just sort of cleaning and putting things together. The boil and pop method clearly does work on these larger figures, as my Egon shows you. Uh, he's now looking pretty nice and was made up of uh, parts from other figures. The proton packs, I have shown you how to repair those before. It's a little bit of scratch building using some styrene sheet and some plastic weld, and you can actually get them back up and working because more often than not, if you find a proton pack, some part of it will be broken. So there you go, don't throw them away. They can be fixed. And now that I have these four figures ready, the next thing I want to work on is my Ecto-1 because I want to do some uh, custom work on that. And actually, while I've been working on this project, I've come up with an idea for a part that I hadn't quite worked out how to do, but now I have. So that is gonna be next on my list of real Ghostbusters projects. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And if you've really enjoyed it and want to help support Toy Ploy, then why not think about becoming a Patreon or YouTube channel member? You get early access to all of my restoration videos and also access to an exclusive video series called On The Cutting Mat, where I show projects and restorations that you won't see anywhere else. So have a think about that and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos.